We're looking at even more heavy rain in the bluegrass through the start of the work week. Coming up, I'll break down the flood threat on this WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. It's pretty bad. I mean, come down here and seeing stuff like this. Coming up, many parts of the Richmond Cemetery have flooded, making it very difficult for family members to visit the grave sites of their loved ones. Severe weather is wreaking havoc across the nation. We ran inside the bathroom, hung down, and the next thing you hear is crash and glass. Coming up, crews in Texas are getting a look at damage from tornadoes. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. More storms today. Thanks for watching WKYT. I'm Kristen Kennedy. Heavy rain continues to soak much of the bluegrass tonight, and a flash flood watch has been issued for several counties. And that is why our WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day continues. WKYT's Mike Linden is tracking all that wet weather. And a lot of it right now, Kristen, across pretty much the northern portion of the Commonwealth. We take a look, though, at a heavy band of rainfall right now pushing through the McGoffin County. Johnson County area. You can see that that shape there indicating some pretty strong winds associated with that. And there's a good reason why the temperatures, which we will get to in just a moment. Northern Kentucky still seeing some of the heavy rainfall right now passing through northern Bourbon County and eastward toward Carlisle and Flemingsburg, but things are improving. At as we work our way through the evening hours, but a flash flood watch still in effect for any of the counties here in this green color, mainly central and western Kentucky. That does include some southern Kentucky counties like Casey County there. This will extend through Monday evening as we are looking at more heavy rain on the way into Monday evening. And you want to talk about something wild. Look at the temperature differential right now. Right now, the southeast in the low 70s, by the way, in Breathitt County, 77 degrees today. 77 degrees. Anyway, we look toward the north, a big time split in temperatures. Look at that, the upper 40s in some spots there, even the low 40s, not far away, the low 70s. And that is going to create for some big time headaches into tomorrow as well. There's a lot more active weather on its way. I'll break down the flood threat coming up. The wet weather is causing problems across the region. One Madison County man says the rain is flooding the cemetery where several of his loved ones are buried. WKYT's Mike Byer went to the cemetery to check out the rising water. He has our top story at six. I got a sister right here, and I got a brother and sister over there, and I got another brother over there. Michael Smith spends much of his time visiting family members who are buried in the Richmond Cemetery. However, the recent string of wet weather has made that difficult to do. Well, I just came out the other day and noticed how bad it really was. Several parts of the cemetery are underwater, including four of the grave sites where Smith's brothers and sisters are buried. It's pretty bad. I mean, coming down here and seeing stuff like this. The flooding has gotten to the point where Smith says he can't even walk up to his loved one's graves. Well, it's very heartbreak. I mean, you know, just you want to come see your brothers and sisters and your loved ones that's passed away, and you can't walk up to the grave and see them. And, you know, so it's pretty bad. Despite the flooding in the cemetery, Smith says he'll keep visiting his loved ones just like he has for over six decades. In Richmond, Mike Byer, WKYT. Smith says that he has started noticing the problem with all of that flooding at the cemetery just in the last few years. Nationwide, at least 11 people in the Dallas, Texas area have died in a tornado outbreak. Several tornadoes hit the Lone Star State last night. Today, survivors and emergency crews are taking a look at the extensive damage. Omar Villafranca is in Rowlett, Texas. David Dennison's backyard shed is shredded, wrapped around a pole on his neighbor's property. His neighborhood outside of Dallas was one of the hardest hit by a swarm of tornadoes. We ran inside the bathroom, hung down, and the next thing you heard is crash and glass. Oh! The occasional lightning strike illuminated the twisters that started touching down in the Dallas area around 6.30 Saturday night. At least 11 people died, including several who were in their cars when a tornado crossed Interstate 30. Officials say the path of destruction stretches for 40 miles and more than 600 structures are damaged or destroyed. Weather forecasters say two tornadoes clocked speeds of up to 200 miles per hour, tossing mobile homes like toys and flattening entire streets. 
The governor of Texas says the situation is still volatile across the northern part of the state that is simultaneously experiencing extreme ice and snow conditions and torrential rain. We need you to remain vigilant. Local officials in a town outside of Dallas sent out four alerts in the minutes before the tornadoes hit, warning people to take cover. I think that's the reason we have fewer fatalities or fewer injuries than we have. At this early stage of the recovery, authorities warn the number of victims may still rise. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Rowlett, Texas. In Illinois, weather is to blame for killing a Kentucky family. A Louisville TV station reports the family was traveling to Minnesota last night. The Marion County, Illinois coroner says three adults and two children were in a car near Patoka, Illinois, when floodwaters swept them away. The family called 911 around 730, but firefighters couldn't find the car until 11. All five people died. The coroner is not yet releasing their names. To track storms hitting the nation and storms in Kentucky, you can go to WKYT.com or you can download the WKYT weather app on your phone. Lexington police are investigating a deadly crash. The wreck happened near the intersection of Georgetown Road and Ironworks Pike last night. The Fayette County Coroner's Office says 49-year-old Craig Barber was driving on Georgetown Road when his car crashed into a pole. The coroner says Barber died at UK Hospital. Police are still trying to figure out what caused that crash. An overnight fire destroyed an eastern Kentucky grocery store. Lawrence County emergency management leaders say the fire started in a truck in the family foods parking lot and the flames quickly spread to the building. We're told six fire departments helped put out the fire. Diane Castle has owned the store since 1997. She believes someone vandalized and intentionally set the truck parked next to the store on fire. I just never thought that it would turn out the way it did. I thought, well, the fire department will get here, they'll put this out and everything will be fine. But it was just too far gone. No one was injured. Castle has not yet decided if she will rebuild. Police in Louisville are increasing security at a popular mall after hundreds of teenagers got into fights there. Police had to break up fights between, by their estimations, 1 and 2,000 kids at Mall St. Matthews last night. They say the teenagers were running around the mall and spilling into the parking lot. Officers also received reports about, reports about shots fired, but couldn't confirm any of those reports. They say it was tough to make any arrests because of the sheer number of fights occurring. I believe this was random. I believe this was a, a, a byproduct of, of juveniles congregating and uh, there being some disturbances growing out of that, fights, if you will, uh, those kinds of things, and uh, escalating out of control. Police are not reporting any injuries. Shelter leaders in Frankfurt are trying to track down a dog they just picked up from Laurel County. Harvey was one of the dogs rescued from a hoarding case more than a week ago. Rescuers brought him to Life House for animals in Frankfurt. Leaders there say he slipped out of his harness last night around 10:15 and has been missing ever since. Someone last saw him within the last hour on Cardwell Lane in Frankfurt. We're told Harvey may respond to treats or to canned food. In Eastern Kentucky, family is increasing the reward for any information leading to their missing loved one. William Scotty Fannin has been missing since December 10th. His family last saw him in the Milo community in Martin County. Right now, search crews are in the process of draining Milo Lake. The sheriff said cadaver dogs led them to believe there is a body there. The family is now offering $2,500 for information leading to Fannin. Do Lexington parents need help giving their child one more Christmas gift this year? Donnie and Joe Grayson's son has autism, and they worry that they'll soon have trouble keeping up with them. WKYT Sean Moody talked to the family about a gift that may be able to help. There's a lot of love inside the Grayson home, but also a lot of challenges. I get to be home whenever he needs me, which is a lot. Joe and Donnie Grayson's son Thatcher has autism. We've known since he was uh, about three. Yeah. Um, that's when we got the official diagnosis. But I'll be honest with you, um, I knew that they were going to diagnose him with autism when he was about two. He's eight now and growing fast. We have to worry about him getting up in the middle of the night and 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 doing things in our apartment or, God forbid, 
going out the doors and going somewhere? I haven't been able to move as quickly. I can't chase him down. I can't go anywhere by myself with him um, just because of his wandering behavior. Because if he were to bolt, I wouldn't be able to catch him. They think they found a solution. It would be a life changer in ways that we don't know. Four Paws for Ability trains autism assistance dogs. If you had a dog here, the dog could alert us to the fact that, hey, he's awake. It could alert us to the fact that um, he's at the doors. But they're not cheap. The Graysons say it'll cost about $14,000 for the dog and the time spent for training. And we've actually been fundraising for a year already. We're at $585, so we've got $13,000. You know, you do the math. It's a long way to go, but it's a goal they hope they hit someday soon. When you give a four paws for ability donation, to help get a dog for a child who needs it. It's the best present that child, that family, will ever get. In Lexington, Sean Moody, WKYT. The Graysons have set up a fundraising site for Thatcher's dog. We have a link to that page on our website, WKYT.com.